you ever had your dog's nails cut professionally or cut your dog's nails at home and when you looked at them, they still seemed really long? The reason that is, is because the vein in your dog's nails, which is called the quick, is too long. But what if I told you I can help you fix that? My goal is by the end of this video, I can help you get the quicks in your dog's nails to recede. Shut up! Hi guys, my name is Alana and I've been a professional dog groomer for 15 years and I have helped many of my own clients understand and form a plan to get their dog's quicks to start to recede and get their paw health and structure back to where it was. And I will demonstrate the techniques I'm talking about today and I will show you the differences as well on my own dog. Okay, to start, let's talk about methods. You have a few choices of tools and it gives you options for what your dog will tolerate best. You can use nail clippers, nail grinders, or a combination of the two. I would suggest having and using both if possible, but the truth is it's not going to work for all dogs. I have some of my clients that are clip only and some that are grind only. Ideally, it would be both, but you win some battles and you lose some battles and you gotta pick what works best for your situation. I do have a video where I touch on some mistakes you could be making when it comes to at-home nail clipping and I can help you make that battle a little bit easier and I will link that video above if you want and below, you can check that out, it'll be in the description. Now I'm sure you've taken a look around online and you've probably saw the diagrams where it tells you where to cut on your dog's nails that doesn't cut into the vein. And these can be super helpful and work really well for maintenance, but in order to receive the quick, you actually have to cut the nail at additional angles to what it says. So let's think of it this way. You want to expose as many sides of the quick as possible because this is going to put pressure on it. And ultimately, it wants to protect itself. So it will begin to recede so that it is safely protected by that hard outer shell. So that means you need to trim off about a 45 degree angle from the bottom, tops, and sides. Then you can go in with the grinder and do the same. Now this is all well and good, but this needs to be done fairly often in order to keep that constant pressure on the quick so that it does start receding. Otherwise, there would be really no reason for it to. So when you Google schedules for this, you're going to see a lot of things that are going to say weekly trims are for maintenance and for quick receding, you need to do this every three, two days even. But let's all be honest with ourselves. In most cases, this is just unmanageable. Also, some dogs are naturally just heavier on their feet than others, and they require less trimming than the ones who are daintier walkers. And senior dogs are often less mobile, so their nails have a tendency to be longer as well. Plus, dogs who walk on grass more frequently tend to have nails that aren't getting worn down as much as ones who walk on concrete or rocks more often, so there are plenty external factors that play a role in determining a schedule. My own dog's nails, who are on a maintenance schedule, I'm not always the best at remembering when to do them but they're usually done about every two, three weeks, but I am sure I've gone for it before. And although that is not ideal and I wouldn't say it's ideal, but we all get busy and life definitely catches up with us. Now here's what I will say. I'd shoot if possible for once a week, or if that's just way too much at minimum, every two weeks, especially if possible, do more in the beginning to really get a good start with it. As I mentioned, there are a lot of different factors. So some dogs might not see a lot of progress with a schedule like that, but others might see a huge impact. So you really have to keep that in mind when you're going in with the intention of receding a dog's quick. So Lottie here is gonna help me demonstrate to you how to recede a quick, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do one, toe with just the method with the nail clipper of the 45 degree angle. I'm going to do another toe with the 45 degree angle as well as the top being done. And then I'm going to go in with the grinder and show you that same method. And then I'm going to do the fourth toe where I take the sides off as well, exposing as much of the quick as possible. And I will show you the difference between each one. So this one is just the 45 degree angle. This one, I'm going to take the tip as well. 
This one, I'm going to do the 45 plus the tip. And then I'm going to go in with the grinder. And then this one here, I'm going to do all the way around. So there's your 45. Here's the front, the sides, a little bit more off the front. And then I'm going to go in with the grinder. So this is the one that I did with just the 45 degree angle and it is okay. This second one was done with a 45 degree angle and I took some off the tip as well. This one was done in the same fashion, so the 45 degree angle. The tip as well, but with the addition of a grinder. And this one here, the one that's as short as possible, is the one that's been done the entire way around. So I did the sides, the front, and the back, the whole thing, and I'll show you from the front. Maddie, put your hand out of the way. So that is what it looks like from the front. It is very short. So you can see the difference between how much you can actually get off with this method. So this is going to be like the longest one still. And then it, you can I can feel it that it goes on an angle where it gets shorter between the one that's even been clipped and like grinded. So makes a big difference. And really when you get a good perspective of looking from this angle, you can really see that quick kind of poking right out at the edge there. That black little dot. You got to give her a treat though because otherwise and she doesn't feel rewarded. Good girl. But here's the thing, you not only have to have an appropriate schedule, but you also have to expose as much of the quick as possible from all angles in order to have any chance of receding it. If you're doing a basic 45 degree angle cut, even every few days, you're still unlikely to make a dent in receding the quick since you're not putting enough pressure on it to effectively chase it further back. So it's super important to really make sure both the method and the schedule are considered as well as using both a clipper and Dremel if possible. That's just really going to deliver the knockout punch to the quick that you need. Now here's the thing, if you don't already know how to use the Dremel, I can help you with that in this video right here. Bye.